vitamin B12 deficiency is the topic for this video. And vitamin B12 uh, is actually a very, very uh, important uh, vitamin. It's also known as cobalamin. That's another term uh, used to describe vitamin B12. And vitamin B12 is necessary for the formation of red blood cells. Uh, it's uh, involved in the uh, chemical pathway uh, to create red blood cells. And if there's a deficiency, obviously you'll have uh, a patient with anemia. Uh, so that's the very, very uh, fundamental basics. Um, vitamin B12 is uh, stored uh, in the liver. Uh, quite, quite large amounts of it is stored in the liver. So to be deficient in it uh, means that uh, yeah, you've either not gotten it uh, through diet or you're not absorbing it even if you are uh, consuming it. So I wanted to first, before I get into symptoms and diagnosis, talk a little bit about the causes of vitamin B12 deficiency. Um, there's quite a few, but there's, they're breaking down into categories um, and that makes it easier to remember. The first one is uh, inadequate diet. And when you say inadequate diet, what they really are talking about is uh, most commonly uh, people who are on these vegan diets. A vegan diet, for those of you who don't know, is uh, a diet in which you don't eat any animal products. It's one step beyond vegetarianism. Vegetarian, of course, is someone who doesn't eat meat, but vegan is someone who doesn't eat meat and doesn't eat any animal products. So anything that comes from an animal, like an egg or milk or anything like that. And um, if that diet is uh, adhered to strictly, the person can develop vitamin B12 deficiency. Now, the second reason is uh, uh, a problem with absorption, uh, impaired absorption of vitamin B12. Um, vitamin B12, uh, this is a big one, actually. The first one is easy to talk about, you know, you're just not eating enough, or you're not eating type of foods that have vitamin B12, but impaired absorption, we need to kind of talk a little bit about this. We need to draw a diagram. So I'm going to draw a diagram of the uh, stomach. And um, as you know, this is the esophagus and this is the stomach. And the first part uh, of the small intestine is called the duodenum. And then later on, much later on, uh, it can become the jejunum. And then finally, it becomes the ileum and these are the components of the small intestine inside the stomach you have these cells and these cells uh, well there's many cells but some of the cells are called parietal cells p a r i parietal cells r i e t a l and parietal cells release a uh, molecule called intrinsic factor and this intrinsic factor or IF is very important because it binds to the B12 so picture it you've eaten something that's got B12 in it it goes down into your stomach and uh, this intrinsic factor then binds to it and this uh, now B12 combined with intrinsic factor is what is absorbed into your body and where is it absorbed that's an important thing to remember it's reabsorbed into your body Absorption takes place in the terminal ileum, which is, of course, the, the the final part of the ileum down here. So this all needs to take place. So all this talk, uh, let me uh, erase the vegan diet up there because I'd like to um, keep um, this diagram. The reason I drew all this is because the second reason of uh, vitamin B12 uh, deficiency is impaired absorption. And... Impaired absorption can occur two big ways. The first way is if you don't have this intrinsic factor. If there's no intrinsic factor, then vitamin B12 doesn't bind to it and therefore cannot be reabsorbed in the terminal ileum. And why would you not have intrinsic factor? If you have gastritis, if there's a lot of inflammation in the stomach, atrophic gastritis is known as, then that will create a situation in where there's destruction of the gastric mucosa and that will lead to a situation where you don't uh, produce the uh, intrinsic factor. Um, another reason that you might get the situation is if there's gastric surgery component of the stomach that produces uh, intrinsic factor is surgically removed. So that's the first uh, part of it. The second part uh, of why you would have impaired absorption is something called I think I can squeeze it in here, inflammatory bowel disease. Inflammatory bowel disease, uh, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, that also causes a, a situation in which 
you have impaired absorption. So that's very important to remember. Uh, I mean, this is probably the most important thing in, in terms of causes of vitamin B12 deficiency. There's other causes, uh, but those are the most important and, and most likely to be tested. I want to talk a little bit more about this um, intrinsic factor. Remember, the stomach has parietal cells, and those parietal cells secrete, uh, produce intrinsic factor, and then the intrinsic factor binds to the B12. And then eventually, this gets uh, uh, absorbed in the terminal ilium of the final part of the term the final part of the ilium if this doesn't take place then you get vitamin b12 deficiency now there's a special name uh, given to this particular type of vitamin b12 deficiency meaning if this is the cause of vitamin b12 deficiency it's called pernicious anemia so just want to touch base on that um, and if that is indeed the case, most likely the reason this the stomach is not producing the uh, intrinsic factor is because there is atrophic gastritis. And one final point about this before I move on to symptoms is that atrophic gastritis increases the risk of stomach cancers. And that's very important to remember. Not very difficult to remember, uh, but important to remember. So inflammation, chronic inflammation, can lead to uh, cancer. All right, so now let's move on to the symptoms. The symptoms of the vitamin B12 deficiency are uh, really the symptoms of anemia because that's uh, that's what you have, uh, essentially, because vitamin B12 is uh, involved in the uh, chemical process to build red blood cells, and if you don't have it, you'll, you won't get the red blood cells that you need, and you'll be anemic. So, you know, shortness of breath and weakness and fatigue, and you might feel cold also, but interestingly, on licensing exams, they tend to uh, talk about things that are more specific to vitamin B12 rather than the anemia. And what I mean is neurologic symptoms. And there's a f about three neurologic symptoms that I really want to touch base on. And the first one is gait ataxia. The way the person uh, walks will be affected. And the second one is um, um, weakness of the extremities. And the final one I want to touch on is uh, uh, problems with sensation, in particular uh, positional and vibratory. So remember that those are very important. That that'll be in your licensing exam clinical vignettes for sure when they're talking about symptoms of of um, uh, B12. And in particular, there's something very important you need to remember is that. Vitamin B12 deficiency uh, can eventually lead to a neurologic condition and that neurologic condition which would have these symptoms is known as subacute combined degeneration, degeneration of the spinal cord and brain. Remember that name, subacute combined degeneration. That's the neurologic condition that can develop if you have uh, severe vitamin B12 deficiency and the reason is because you get um, uh, the white matter of the brain and spinal cord is affected uh, and that's that leads to these neurologic symptoms okay so now let's move on to diagnosis the diagnosis really um, involves uh, you know the CBC you have to check uh, hemoglobin and hematocrit and of course this will show anemia but uh, you also look at the MCV MCV is a is a, a test that shows you what type of anemia and if you remember if the MCV is greater than a hundred then it's a macrocytic anemia which is the type of anemia you have in vitamin B12 deficiency and of course you also need to test the vitamin B12 level I mean that's common sense but you also need to test the level of the folate because folate if folate is if you're deficient in folate you can also get a macrocytic anemia so you need to differentiate um, there's one more test that they sometimes do called a Schilling test and that test is done if uh, only if uh, you're trying to diagnose uh, an in intrinsic factor deficiency that we previously talked about if, if that's uh, something that you uh, suspect uh, 
then you would do a shilling test. All right, finally the treatment. Well, the treatment is actually nothing uh, uh, incredibly complicated. It's supplementation with vitamin B12. You either give it orally or you can give it IM. And it can be given, uh, um, if it's orally, it's usually given once a day. Uh, if it's IM, it's usually given Q weekly. And um, after uh, four weeks or six weeks, you retest the CBC and and the, the B12 level and to see if the supplementation is indeed helping the patient. All right, now we will move on to some clinical vignettes. 46-year-old woman is seen by her family physician because she is feeling poorly. A woman has known history of severe chronic gastritis. Physical exam demonstrates paler of skin and mucosal membranes. No other positive findings are noted. Hematic rate of 33 is demonstrated in the physician's office. Blood smear is performed and reviewed in the office shows enlarged erythrocytes that have enlarged central pale areas. Neutrophils and other white cells are present in normal numbers. Some of the neutrophils have hypersegmented nuclei, which of the following is most likely diagnosis. Well, this one right here is the big tip off. Remember, chronic gastritis can lead to destruction of those parietal cells and you don't get the in intrinsic factor. Um, and that can uh, cause uh, vitamin B12 deficiency because vitamin B12 needs to bind to intrinsic factor in order to be uh, absorbed in the terminal ileum. But they also mentioned enlarged erythrocytes and that's referring, of course, to the, the macrocytic nature uh, of the uh, blood smear. And that um, is a very uh, classic thing on licensing exams. So, of course, vitamin B12 deficiency is the answer. Next one, a patient develops persistent macrocytic anemia. Serum folate levels are normal, but serum vitamin B12 levels are low. Oral vitamin absorption studies demonstrate that the patient is unable to absorb vitamin B12 in adequate amounts. Cancer of which of the following organs is most strongly associated with the patient's condition? All right. Well, this is another classic uh, scenario where a patient is not able to absorb. Uh, so that means there's an intrinsic factor deficiency. And that means that the patient most likely had uh, gastritis, uh, chronic gastritis most likely. And if you remember, chronic gastritis can lead to stomach cancers. And finally, the last one, a 35-year-old woman uh, comes to the office because of generalized weakness and pins and needles feeling in her lower extremities uh, for the past three weeks. She states that she feels unsteady on her feet. She exercises daily, rarely drinks alcohol, and is strict vegetarian. She, This is the first time you have met this woman. She tells you that she has not had any major illnesses but has been hospitalized multiple times over the past years for anorexia nervosa. Temperature is 96, blood pressure is 110 over 70, pulse is 60, respirations are 18. Examination shows weakness of the proximal and distal muscles of the lower extremities. There is impaired proprioception and vibratory sensation. Deep tendon reflexes are increased and the gait is ataxic. The most likely diagnosis is, I wasn't able to fit in the um, answer choices, but uh, if you remember earlier in the presentation, we talked about the neurologic symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency and those included uh, ataxia of the gait, uh, they included um, weakness of extremities and they also included problems with sensation either uh, proprioception or um, vibratory and all, those, all of those things are mentioned in this um, uh, vignette and if you do you remember the name of the uh, Neurologic disorder, that name is subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord. And why does this happen? Because in vitamin B12 deficiency, you the, the brain and spinal cord are affected, in particular the white matter, and that eventually leads to demyelination, and that can lead to these types of neurologic symptoms.